Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Taylor and today I will be presenting uh, the career readiness session when leveraging power of ePortfolios. So feel free to drop your questions in the chat throughout the presentation and there will be a time at the end of the webinar where we'll open up the room for any questions that you may have or address any questions that were, were put in the chat. To begin, let's discuss what an ePortfolio is. An ePortfolio is a digital collection of artifacts that showcases your achievements, skills, experiences, and reflections. It serves as a tool for presenting evidence of your learning, growth, and accomplishments. Typically, ePortfolios include multiple sections, depending on what it is that you're looking to provide your audience, but these sections can include resume, CV, projects, skills, coursework, offering these, these different areas really offer that wide range of demonstrating your capabilities and showing off what you've done towards your professional development. There are numerous benefits to having an ePortfolio and I often talk to my students about building an ePortfolio to have in any area that they are in within their career or academics, that starting point. Does it, it doesn't really matter that starting point. So first is that they enhance visibility to potential employers and educators. A well-crafted e-portfolio effectively highlights and demonstrates essential skills employers are seeking in those in competitive candidates beyond a traditional resume. You often say or hear that the resume doesn't fully capture what I'm capable of. Well, that's what this ePortfolio is for. It's to show what you're, you're fully capable of, but also goes into a little bit more depth into showing employers that you are capable of critical thinking, problem solving, and communication, because an ePortfolio captures a lot of these different types of skills when you go to build one. Secondly, ePortfolios demonstrate continuous learning and growth over time. This ongoing documentation of achievements and work provides an overall view of one's professional journey. Additionally, ePortfolios encourage self-reflection and personal development. By documenting your successes and challenges, you can track your development and really identify those areas for improvement. E-portfolios allow you to showcase a diverse range of skills and experiences, making you a more attractive candidate to employers. A study by LinkedIn actually reveals that profiles completed with portfolios receive 71% more profile views than those without that portfolio. This illustrates how e-portfolios serve as evidence of practical skills in that real world application and how it is desired that others want to know more about you. These insights are backed again by that credible research and industry data emphasizing their relevance in today's competitive job market. Having an ePortfolio is also beneficial when networking, allowing you to share your website so that others can learn more about you. Lastly, a major benefit to an ePortfolio is its assistance on making that career change into a new industry or beginning to enter into a new industry or into an industry for the first time. This approach benefits not only early career professionals, but also those who are established. And as it demonstrates your longevity and ongoing commitment to your industry in areas of interest. So I kind of want to backtrack a little bit that how I mentioned this does benefit those looking for a career change or getting started in your career. So I want to focus on leveraging how that ePortfolio can really help with that change or those first steps. So for example, if you're interested in environmental science, maybe this is an industry you're new to or looking to get into, you might include some photos and details of a greenhouse that you've built. So you don't necessarily have the hands-on experience within the field, but this is an area that you're really passionate about. So this is just something you do for fun. And with building that greenhouse, this it takes a lot of different skills and knowledge to do this. So demonstrating this on your ePortfolio shows your practical experience with sustainable practices, along with other, other areas that employers would be looking for. Or maybe you've been involved in highway cleanups. Adding that to your ePortfolio highlights your commitment to maintaining a clean environment, ability to take initiative, as, along with those additional skills that it takes with collaboration and communication and getting supplies ordered. So there's a lot that goes into these projects and self-starter projects that, you, that you're doing on a daily basis or within your downtime. 
And maybe you're thinking about moving into IT. You could showcase a personal website you've built or a home lab setup you've created. Adding instru an instructions tab or a walkthrough of how you've built them, this demonstrates your technical skills and problem solving abilities, which are key to the IT world. For those looking to enter maybe the health professions, if you've included, um, maybe you would include some volunteer work with maybe like an organization with American Red Cross or maybe a local nonprofit organization in your community, but you can include that the work that you've done there. This might be things like your involvement with patient care, emergency response, or health initiatives. All of this, all these different areas show your dedication to the field and helps give you that opportunity to highlight your relevant experience that you have. And maybe history is your passion. You could create an e-portfolio of historical sites you've traveled to, providing photos along with short articles you've written to capture your knowledge and experience that showcase the historical significance of each location. This not only shows your enthusiasm for the subject, but also your research skills and ability to present information in a way that's both informative and engaging. So there are ways to taking these different approaches in whatever industry that you're in. These were just a few examples of how you could do it, but whatever industry you're in and you're looking for that change, consider building an e-portfolio. And ultimately, the benefits for e-portfolios, they're, they're a very powerful way to showcase your knowledge, skills, and abilities. Not only do they benefit newer professionals, but also well-established professionals. I strongly encourage you, um, especially if you might lack that paid hands-on experience, or you're looking to change careers or just continuing to grow within your profession, to consider building an e-portfolio, including that, that e-portfolio link on your resume, similar to how you do it with LinkedIn, or maybe you include it on your LinkedIn profile and you link your LinkedIn profile onto that resume. So that way employers and professionals can continue to view who you are and what you're doing in that field to help gain more traction and visibility. So I'm gonna kind of go over several components of an e-portfolio. And the first main component that I want to touch base on is that home or, home or introduction section. And this section is all about introducing yourself and setting the stage for your e-portfolio. So the home and introduction section usually start with a brief bi bio biography to give visitors a quick overview of who you are and your professional background. Mention your current role, your journey so far, and any key achievements or experiences that define you in your career. And of course, you can add some different personal touches to it. So if you want to include your favorite place to travel or your favorite meal, like adding that personal touch can be really beneficial because it's not, it's not structured like a resume where it's very black and white. This is giving a little bit more insight to your personality and who you are. But again, this, this type of introduction might vary on, on that targeted audience again, so and how you're looking to present your information. So those are things just to keep in mind when you're creating that home and introduction section. Be sure to include your resume, CV, or both onto that onto your portfolio. To make it easy for viewers to access your detailed resume, provide a PDF or downloadable version because this allows potential employers or your clients to download your resume and review it at their convenience. Additionally, this downloadable feature will ensure that visitors can easily get a copy of your resume for their records, or if they are looking to consider you for an opportunity down the road, they would have that available to refer back to. So what I encourage you to do if, if this is, well, I encourage you to very much include this onto, it's a main component of the ePortfolio, but to include a clear link or button labeled download my resume or view CV to make it straight a more straightforward and streamlined process to access. If you're not comfortable putting that downloadable option, that's absolutely okay. You can still provide the resume on there for the employer or visitors to still view to get to gain a sense of where you've started and where you're at now and kind of where you're headed. So now we have the project section. This this section is a very major component of the e-portfolio, as I have mentioned, the other two are major components, hits this slide, but the project section will look different at, for everyone. And depend, again, it just depends on kind of the approach that you're looking to take. But this section is based, again, based on each individual. Your project section may include several areas or might just be one. 
These various sections may include an article tab because you have been publishing articles or blogs. You might have volunteer work or specific projects that you've been working on, how I've discussed earlier, like maybe you're traveling or building a greenhouse, doing conservation type work. So you might have different sections all within one project area, or you might have it labeled out differently. It, it's going to be that personal preference and what works best for you and the visual appeal. But no matter how the project section or sections are presented, it is that vital portion of your ePortfolio to include. It's where you showcase your best work, highlighting key projects with high quality images, detailed descriptions, and links to live projects or case studies. This is your chance to describe the challenges you faced, the innovative solutions you've implemented, and the outcomes you've achieved. It's not just about listing your work and projects that you have done, it's about telling the story behind it. Not just the story, your story. When creating this section, use a variety of media, such as pictures, videos, and interactive elements to bring your projects to life. This approach makes the portfolio eye-catching and engaging, giving potential employers or clients a clear view of your expertise and the impact of your contributions. This section is particularly valuable when you're making a career change. Documenting your projects here allow you to highlight the specific experiences and achievements that are most relevant to the new career you're pursuing. Focus on projects that demonstrate your transferable skills and your relevant experience. Including this section in your ePortfolio provides that concrete evidence of your ability to apply your skills across different areas. It shows that your career transition is not just that leap, but it's a well thought out process that you've taken. This is your opportunity to craft a narrative around your career change, one that highlights your readiness for the new field and clearly demonstrates your capabilities. When assembling this section, start to think a little bit about, again, that story that you want to tell, because that's what this ePortfolio is doing. Choose projects, again, that best represent your journey and showcases your potential into this new career or the career you're looking to start. This approach can transform your ePortfolio into a powerful tool to start your career or that career change. And then for established professionals, this section is equally beneficial because it serves as a testament to your ongoing professional and personal growth and, adapt and adapt adaptability in your current field. By continuously documenting your key projects and accomplishments, you demonstrate not only your expertise, but also your commitment to staying at the forefront of your industry. An advantage to this for professionals who are established is that when it comes time for seeking promotions or negotiating a salary raise, or maybe you're looking to move into a leadership role with another company, it provides that tangible proof of your contributions and can be that persuasive element in that professional discussion that you have or proof to send along the way with as to why you should have the salary rates or the promotion. It just gives you that, that backing within the presentation that you end up providing. But like the projects portion, the skills section will vary on how you want to present your audience. Overall, the section you'll list your technical skills and competencies. I suggest avoiding avoid only listing out the skills. So versus just saying that you have um, communication, leadership, team, your team player. So instead of just listing out all of those great things that you have, but include um, your prof your proficiency levels. And this is going to be more so for those hard type skills. So if you speak another language, if you have soft, uh, there's a specific software program that you have listing those proficiency levels as a beginner, intermediate, or expert, along with examples of how you've applied these hard skills in real world scenarios can be more beneficial. Additionally, another way to highlight this is by providing specific instances and where your skills have made a difference, such as improving a process, solving a problem, or achieving a project milestone. So you're not just saying that you're a problem solver, but you're providing a specific instance as to how you solved a problem, which shows the employer that you know how to problem solve. So it's kind of that type of approach. This adds depth to your skill set and also shows practical experience, making your skills more tangible and credible to the viewer. Again, this is for established professionals and those looking to break into an industry because problem solving and doing project management, improving processes, these are, and of course, several, many others really, are going to be desired by employers. And there are, and there are ways to highlight that. 
Now we have the reflection and blog section. This is another optional section um, as well as that skills section or skills component that can be the skills can be integrated in different ways throughout the ePortfolio, but the reflection and blog section is an optional section where you can share your personal insights, reflections on your growth, and thoughts on industry-related topics. This could be through articles, blog posts, or maybe video blogs where you discuss your experiences and what you've learned along the way. This is where you can write about challenges you've overcome, lessons learned, and any emerging trends in your field. It's a great way to show your ongoing commitment to professional development and to position yourself as that leader in your industry. Regularly updating the section can also help keep that portfolio prep fresh and relevant. So this is a really, again, a really great component to add to that e-portfolio. And now we have like the testimonials and references section. And this is a powerful component to the ePortfolio as well as addition, as it can be displayed in various ways. You might choose to dedicate a specific area to showcase these endorsements where visitors can easily find and review positive impact positive feedback that you've received from clients, colleagues, or supervisors. This dedicated section allows you to highlight the impact of your work through direct quotes, videos, or written recommendations, really adding that credibility and trust. Alternatively to creating a designated section, you can also incorporate testimonials, testimonial, testimonials and references strategically through capturing it within other sections of your portfolio. For instance, you might include a client or supervisor's testimonial alongside a relevant project. By integrating these endorsements throughout your, your e-portfolio, you can reinforce the strengths and contributions within those different stages, adding, again, more value to your e-portfolio and the work that you've accomplished. The contact, se contact section is a very crucial component to add as it this section makes it easy for people to reach you, providing your contact information such as your email or in LinkedIn profile. You can you don't have to go personal with it. You don't have to list your full address or your phone number. I mean, if you want to put that you are in Charlestown, West Virginia, that's acceptable just as it is for a resume. But if, if you're just looking to make a contact section by inclu like including um, a form or a booking calendar for consultations, collaborations, it's okay just to list, list that email or that LinkedIn profile. It's really going to be up to your personal preference. But this makes it convenient for potential contacts to get in touch with you. Ensuring this section is straightforward and easy to navigate will be crucial. Um, so that way, these con so that way you are pulling in more people to feel comfortable in reaching out to you, but also being able to easily reach out to you. And it just increases having this contact section. It just increases that likelihood that people will reach out because you've made it convenient and easy for them to do so. Additional features of portfolio and e-portfolio can include our videos, articles, and links. And I've mentioned this kind of throughout these other, these other components, but for the ePortfolio, you can embed videos that showcase your presentations, interviews, or project demonstrations. This visual content can engage visitors and provide a view of your capabilities. Ensure that the videos, if you do include them, are high quality and well edited to maintain a professional appearance. Having links to articles that you've written or contributed to in your field of expertise, or maybe there are some different articles that you really value as a professional and that adds to your professional development, then include those as well as it does give you more credibility for the field, especially if you are continuing to grow or looking to change. Having this type of information on the ePortfolio can be extremely beneficial. And then providing that brief inter a brief summary or introduction to each article. So that way it gives the reader context and it also highlights the relevance to your work. So how does this article relate to what you're looking to do or why is it important to you? Or a little synopsis of what the article is about if it's something that you've written. Another feature is adding those links, providing links to relevant websites. So maybe you're an IT or cy you're with an IT or cyber or marketing. So you have created different websites out there. You can link those so the um, employers can see them or the people that you're networking with can, can refer to them. Portfolio. So if you have multiple portfolios out there, social media profiles, just makes it easy for visitors to explore more about you and your work across different platforms. 
And if you do include these links or multiple links, ensure that the links are up to date and lead to the professional, well-maintained sites that enhance your online presence. And you're also going to want to continue to monitor to make sure the links still work, especially if you're going through like third-party articles, not something that you've written, as sometimes those articles do come down or they get moved. So now we're going to explore some of the best tools for creating e-portfolios. These platforms that I'm going to discuss are known to be user friendly and they do offer free options, making it easy for anyone to really get started with building that e-portfolio. So Wix, WordPress, and Weebly, these three are consistent with offering a free plan with customizable templates. It is a very user friendly platform and you can add different tabs and sections to showcase various pieces of work, which is really great for organizing those different projects. I have personally used Wix. I had to create an e-portfolio for a class assignment, so I was able to integrate links and videos into it. And I did, I did do it all for free through that website. And it was, and I will say it was fairly easy to use. So those are things to also look into too, what, um, what platform will allow you to do some of the different features you're wanting to add. But those three are, are fairly popular when creating an e-portfolio. Another one is Adobe Portfolio. If you have Adobe Creative Cloud already, like at the subscription, then Adobe Portfolio is a part of that. Otherwise, I do believe there is an additional cost to it, but this specific program allows you to create multiple pages and tabs for different pieces of work, making this, this um, type is more ideal for creative professionals who need to present some high quality visuals. Google Sites is a completely free and very straightforward to use. This site allows you to add multiple tabs and pages to showcase those different parts of your portfolio, similar to the other ones discussed. But this one is an excellent choice for those looking for an absolutely no cost option. Some of the other Wix and we I'm not 100% sure about Weebly, but I believe WordPress, they do have some paid options. So to my knowledge, based off research, and I encourage you, of course, to go through and research as things do change, um, Google Sites, I believe, is completely free. But again, it's important to do your due diligence when it comes to um, subscriptions and looking into the cost, cost options. Portfolio is another one that's very well known, and this one is designed specifically for academic and professional portfolios. Portfolio helps you to showcase your educational achievements and projects effectively, and this is a really great platform for students and professionals within education to highlight their work in a more structured manner. So these tools offer various features. They're all different, but they ultimately help create a professional organized online e-portfolio tailored to your specific needs. Deciding on what is best for you, again, it's going to depend on the type of work you're looking to display. So now you're like, okay, I have all these really great options. What, how do I choose? So choosing the right tools for creating your e-portfolio will largely depend on the purpose behind it, on you know, why are you creating this e-portfolio? What, what are you looking to achieve with it? And the industry you're looking to target. So depending on, you know, environmental science or technology is extremely different than law. So, or education or marketing. So it's really identifying who, who is your target audience? Who are you trying to connect with? And there are various reasons why someone might create an e-portfolio. And that goes into that decision making of what's going to be best for me. So, for instance, a student might need an e-portfolio as a part of an assignment. Like I had mentioned before, I create an e-portfolio as an assignment and I need to showcase my academic progress and some projects as well as some professional work. And that was one of the reasons I needed it. And maybe that's one of the reasons you need it. And that's why you're here to learn more today. But also those advancing in their education may also use that e-portfolio to document their research internships or academic achievements are all three as they pursue further studies. So maybe you're a master's student looking to go into a doctoral program, and this is a way of providing that towards your application process. In the professional world, an e-portfolio can be a very powerful tool for marketing yourself, whether you're a job seeker looking to stand out in a competitive field, a freelancer showcasing your work to attract clients, or an established professional demonstrating your expertise to advance in your career. Each of these purposes might require, again, those different tools and approaches. Understanding your specific reason 
or creating an e-portfolio will guide your choice on the best platform, design, and content for you. For example, a creative professional might prioritize a more visually rich platform, so they may consider using Adobe Portfolio, while someone in academia might lean more towards a structured tool like WordPress or Portfolio to organize their research and publications. I, again, encourage you to do your due diligence in researching the various platforms available out there to, to create that e-portfolio to select the, plat the platform that meets your wants and your needs. So let's talk about some tips for building a, a powerful e-portfolio. We've gotten the components, we've kind of gotten some background on why to use it, but building an e-portfolio is beneficial for students and alumni as it serves as a powerful tool to showcase your skills and experiences to potential employers or academic institutions. Here are key tips to ensure your e-portfolio stands out. So when you think about building your e-portfolio, we know the components, but here are some ways to really put it all together. And the first way is to have selective, is to be selective with your content by focusing on focusing on quality over quantity by selecting artifacts that directly align with your career or academic goals. Highlight your best work to effectively demonstrate your capabilities. Next is visual appeal. It's extremely important as consistency in your design and visuals enhances that professionalism and pay attention to layout, color schemes, typography to create a visually appealing and cohesive e-portfolio that grabs the reader's attention and keeps them wanting to, to continue on in your page to learn more about you. Additionally, make sure the e-portfolio is easy to navigate, ensure easy access to different sections of your e-portfolio by organizing your content logically with clear section headings and tabs, making it effortless for visitors to explore and find relevant information. And most importantly, keep your e-portfolio up to date with your latest achievements and experiences. This shows your ongoing growth and commitment to excellence, keeping your e-portfolio current and engaging. Lastly, feedback is going to be essential to ensure you provide a seamless e-portfolio. So seek input from peers, mentors, or industry professionals to gain some insights on ways to improve your portfolio's effectiveness. Constructive feedback will help refine your presentation and ensure your portfolio effective, effectively communicates your strengths and who you are. Now, for this portion of the webinar, I'm going to be screen sharing some e-portfolios. This, and I will also be demonstrating my e-portfolio going through it. And again, mine was built specifically for a class assignment. So there are some areas that I would end up changing now, looking back with additional research over the last year that I've done. But I just wanna give some different examples on ways that you can continue or ways, ways on how to build portfolios, e-portfolios in different manners because they are all going to look a little different as I have mentioned. So I'm gonna move here to this, this portfolio. Give me one moment, I wanna make sure everybody can see this. If you could please give me a thumbs up in the chat, anybody that you can see this portfolio that I have currently presented on the screen. Perfect, okay, great, thank you so much. So here is a really strong portfolio on this student who is looking to provide more information within, she's an educator. So she has been traveling the world and has been involved in various organizations. And as you can see, she has her about section, her resume, two different types of resumes on here, and an overview of what she's done, her pictures that she's, you know, of course, pictures and links, the things that she's been a part of. So this is a very well laid out e-portfolio providing background into who she is. She's showing some personality, which is really great. And it's visually pleasing, uh, pleasing to the eye, keeps you intrigued and wanting to read more. So here's one way of possibly constructing an e-portfolio. I do not, I do not know what site this, person used. However, this is again one way to construct it. And then she has her information up here, her tabs. Oops, click the same one twice. Resume. So it, it jumps you 
directly to where you would, where the reader would want to go. So if they don't want to scroll through all of it, they can come up here. She, as you can see, has that reflection tab, which is what we were we just recently looked at. Provides some background information and more in depth information on some different reflections that she's gone through. Her contact section. As you notice, I know like that skills information that is optional, but of course, in these little blurbs right here, that's where that skill section, well, the skills component can be brought out. So here's just one example of ways to, of a way to build an ePortfolio and how it looks. Here's another one for a cybersecurity professional. This one does have a little bit more focus on the education component, but we have the About Me, his awards and recognitions. And it takes you to a video that he's incorporated for things that he's been awarded for um, coursework. So I did mention that this could be a section to include on an e-portfolio, uh, whether you are looking for it for academic purposes or if you are, this is a could be a strong place for those making that career transition or moving up in their career if you've continued to advance academically. This is a really great section to include, especially since I work with students who, uh, for the resume, they, I, you know, you can include course titles on the resume, but only usually a couple because uh, employers are looking more for how your experience and knowledge is applicable to the job. But this is where that elaboration can take place is right here in this section. So it talks about some course reflection. There's one I he has on here, I believe it's like a walkthrough demonstration. I apologize, I'm not going to the right one. Um, did not write that down. However, you can provide an overview and walk through of like screen recording of the work that you've done, that you've gone through to be able to make more of a statement to demonstrate your skills and, and experience. So as we can see, it has this resume up here, downloadable resume that's made easily available, goes into talking about his certifications that he has, and then his contact information. So as you can see, he doesn't have any email address, phone number, location, and that's absolutely okay. Again, that's gonna be preference. And that's just an example of someone and how they've had their contact information laid out to get easily in touch. This is a person within public relations and advertising. So as you can see, there's a little bit more um, personality to this. Not that the other ones don't have personality, but it aligns with her profession. The cybersecurity one aligns with her profession. The educator, it, it just all goes seamlessly with what they're looking and targeting to do. So here again, she has her resume section. She has projects and then more projects. So how you label those different tabs, it's going to be up to you and what you find works best and what you what you feel is easy to navigate and for and for the readers to learn more about you. Here you can see because I talked about when listing projects possibly giving a little bit of an overview. I mentioned I mentioned this more specifically with the articles. However, whatever pictures you post or videos providing a little synopsis or information or a title can be really helpful. And then she includes some pictures. So adding pictures of work you've done or with you in them, similar to that first one, it just provides a more perfect, uh, personal connection for the readers. And then contact. So as you can see, she does have her information specifically on here, her contact information. Again, that's gonna be the personal preference and the way that you feel is going to be best in the steps to take when it comes to creating that, that strong e-portfolio. And then this is my e-portfolio that I did for a class assignment. So I have my overview. Um, it links directly to my about section. So that was just making it more convenient throughout the way. So um, the first one you see, you scroll through all of it. And then if you want to go through each section, then it takes you there. Within each area of mine, I linked it directly to the tabs. Um, I have a testimonial section with students I've worked with, and I'm very proud to have such great feedback to present on here, but I don't have a, design, a designated testimonial section. So that's how I just incorporated that within there. Um, I have my about section, a little bit of a bio, background on education, and my employment history. So again, it, everybody and how they decide to lay out their e-portfolio is going to depend on what their target audience is, why you're doing it, 
So really the purpose and what you want to present. So mine was for a class assignment. So I do ha heavily focus on my academics and my coursework. Within mine, I did I do have different presentations I've done. So here you can click the video. Here's where I provided a little bit of an overview of what the presentation is about. I, in my student artifacts, um, I was required to do coaching sessions. Uh, they were mock sessions and not, it was with family that I ended up doing it with. However, I have those recorded and you can listen to some, listen through how I go about doing my coaching session. So if an employer were to listen or would be interested in my coaching style, then this is a place that they could come and seek how I go or listen to how I do my different approaches with um, areas of coaching. So that's a way that I have mine set up. I've included my resume and contact information as well. So those are some different overviews of various uh, e-portfolios to be able to pro provide employers and how personalized you make. And it's about showing off your personality and your experience and your work. So um, a lot of great, I cannot, I know I saw it on this one. Uh, oh, they're great demonstration. Of, oh, here it is um, of, of an assignment of a walkthrough. So if you are within cybersecurity or IT, this is a really great way of listing that out or a relevant field where you want to demonstrate what you've done within a course project or assignment. I apologize. I had to click on every link to find that one. Um, but I did want to I did want to give that overview of how that that would look. So I'm going to go over a little bit of a recap of all the information I have just covered. Um, the first thing is start building your e-portfolio today. Now's the time. This is your sign to begin building it, whether it takes you a week or a couple of months. Starting it now, it, it's going to be it's going to be so helpful down the road. It's more than just a collection of your work. It's a digital showcase of achievement, skills and per, per, personal growth and who you are. An e-portfolio enhances your visibility to both employers and educators, making it easier for them to see the value you bring, it also encourages self-reflection and continuous learning, helping you to stay on top of your professional journey. By organizing and presenting your academic and professional accomplishments in one place, you'll find it easier to tell your story and connect the dots of your career. Tools like Wix, Weebly, Adobe Portfolio, WordPress, Google Sites, and Portfolium offer user-friendly platforms to help you create a robust and engaging e-portfolio. Here are some tips to help get you started that we discussed when it comes to designing that e-portfolio. And the first one is align your content with your goals. Maintain a consistent design, update your e-portfolio regularly, ensure it's easy to navigate, and always seek feedback for continuous improvement. Don't wait to start building that e-portfolio and start taking control of your professional narrative. Start telling your story and who you are, getting that out there. So that way it can help continue to build your network, become more visible to employers and just show that you have so much to offer. Thank you everyone for joining me today. I am so happy that you are here and in career services, we are here and happy to assist you as you journey through reaching your career goals. Please feel free to reach out to career services by filling out a, your, a form found on the eCampus or you can reach out via email on the email that's up there on the screen if you're looking for uh, job search, career planning, getting ready to enter a job field, interviewing, career services at is going to be the best email. If you're looking for some resume assistance, resume help at is going to be the best email. And also please keep an eye on your email for a short survey following today's presentation where you can opt in to learn more about the services career services offers and stay updated on our latest offerings. I am going to, here in a moment, drop in the chat a link to CareerLink where you can stay current on all of our webinars, check out our university job board, get connected with professionals within various industries that you might be interested in and utilize the resources that we have. And I also have an article on ePortfolios and how they hire and how they influence hiring decisions. This was published on our AMU APU Edge. So that's a really great article to check out if you're looking to learn a little bit more. And I do wanna let you know that this 
presentation will be added to our YouTube page, which I can also drop that link into the chat as well here in a moment. So if you're looking to create an ePortfolio and want to review some of the information, then feel free to check that out on our Career Services YouTube page. So now I'm going to open up the floor. I'm going to drop in the chat, but I'm also going to open the floor for any questions that you may have section would you put certification so for certifications I would create a whole section for it similar to the cybersecurity one where he had the certifications so because that's a huge that's a huge professional development and core component to a lot of jobs within various industries so I would have its its whole section or you can also include it in your about section as well or introduction I am not sure if you can add an ePortfolio onto your USA Jobs profile. You may be able to pro provide your link into um, the header section on the resume with USA Jobs. You don't want to hyperlink it because of their applicant tracking system, but it's not necessarily required. I USA Jobs is very, fit, no, I don't want to say finicky. USA Jobs is very particular in the information on those resumes. So if you go into USA Jobs and create up your create your account, um, if there's an area to provide a URL for a personal page, then that's what I would do or recommend doing. For those interested in the first portfolio shown. Um, it was created with Wix, but it was on the also on the cheapest plan. So because Wix does have paid options where you can have a little bit more enhanced um, capabilities. So those are the things that, to check out and figure out what's going to be best for you, whether it's free, whether it's a paid um, option, that, that's going to be up to your discretion. And that's why and it's, those platforms are ever changing. So WordPress may know it seems that they may no longer offer a free plan anymore. So if that is something that you're interested in working on, it is going to be important that you look to see what those pricing options are. I did create I did begin the research for this um, a couple of months ago. So that's why things are ever changing. And for that specific slide, I did highly encourage you to do your due diligence on looking into those free plans. And I see we have a hand raise and also some questions in our Q&A box. But thank you, Jonathan, for providing that WordPress may, not, may require um, a payment option. Um, as someone who is re-entering into the workforce, please tell me where I should provide the ePortfolio. Oh, of course. So, Ms. Sampson, if you are interested in creating an ePortfolio and anyone else here, I highly encourage you to link your ePortfolio either directly on your resume um, in your header section. So, like, you would have your name. So, for me, it would say Taylor Sparber, um, Winchester, Virginia, my phone number, and um, email and then my URL for my ePortfolio. So that's one way of doing it. If you have a LinkedIn, that's where I do recommend putting it if you're comfortable, because um, then you can just LinkedIn your LinkedIn your URL and it's typically pretty short. So it fits in that header section a lot better. So, um, or you could do both, but if you include your ePortfolio on LinkedIn, then I would just include your LinkedIn information. Um, but if you don't have a LinkedIn and you do create an ePortfolio, that is something that you can implement within that header section on your resume. I I hope that helped answer your question, Ms. Sampson. And, oh, back to the chat. Yes, for when I created my Wix last year, um, there the AI features were in that, and it was complete at that point. It was free, and it was it was can it was helpful when creating some different content. Um, so social media, yes, of course, you can include that in your social media if that's something that you feel comfortable in. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, usually, those areas have an about section. Oh, and even same for LinkedIn. Usually, you can do like an about an. Well, in your LinkedIn, you have an about section where you can provide a full link. I can actually, oh, I have to leave. I was going to say I could show you an example, but I 
forgot the name of the person I was recently looking into. So I cannot do that. However, um, for other social media pages, I want to say like Instagram, I don't know if Instagram would be the place to put something like this, but you can usually put it, add it into your bio. So, um, and I believe Facebook has a place to put your portfolio link as well. I do not use Twitter, so I cannot speak to that one, but I encourage you to do some research on ways to incorporate that into the social media portion. Um, are some of the better portfolio platforms better than others as far as allowing for data export? I am not sure when it comes to that. I'm sure there are, um, but I encourage you to research to see which ones may do better integration for data export. I apologize, I do not have the answer to that question. Oh, that's really good to know, Christian. There's also certain digital services that give you a e-card. With these e-cards, it connects everything from your portfolio to social media and between. That's something I am going to save and look into. Thank you for sharing. Thank you guys for sharing that. Great, Mark. I'm sorry you missed towards the beginning of the presentation, but I'm happy you stayed through it. But yes, it's going, the full thing will be posted on our YouTube channel. Does anybody else have any questions? All right, everyone. Again, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for joining and feel free to reach out to Career Services if you would like any career coaching assistance. We are here to help and support you along the way.